So one thing I wanted to ask you about was your work as Sherlock Holmes in the radio show. He's sort of like a messianic figure, that he's beyond the normal scope of, of human means and he investigates these crimes that are beyond the capabilities of the law. The 1870s, 1880s was a very heady time in Europe. We can build buildings. We built the Eiffel Tower. We built the Ferris wheel. Now we're starting to design internal combustion engines. We are the crown of creation. And then in 1914, Europe blew itself up for four years and wasn't even satisfied with that. They did it again a few years later. There is a very good cautionary tale here. If you listen to Richard Strauss's A Hero's Life, there's one point where the hero reflects back on his earlier accomplishments. Guess what those accomplishments are? This is a piece of music. The accomplishments are quotes from Richard Strauss's earlier pieces of music. He is envisioning himself as the hero. And at one point there is the critics talk and they're all a bunch of nattering. <laughs> And it's like the hero is going to do this and the hero is going to do this. He mustn't be held back by all these other little people. The intellect was going to rule. We were going to banish the barbarian. We weren't going to be ruled by our base instincts. And so you have Sherlock Holmes who doesn't ever have sex. You know, some people say, oh, well, maybe he's homosexual. I don't buy that. I mean, I, the, the, it wasn't about hiding your sexuality from yourself or from other people. It was about denying it. And this is Platonism. This is Platonic idealism. And so on the other hand, you have Watson, who is married, and he's sort of like observing Holmes, and he's observing the hero. Uh, the, the, the genius of Doyle is he gave us Watson. Watson is us. He's not the super genius. He's just the regular guy. Because if Sherlock says something snarky about women, we always have Watson to say, eh, well, I'm married and I really like it. Without Watson, we would be terrified of, of Holmes. Mm -hmm. He's smarter than everybody else. What holds him back? Why doesn't he just take over? Mm -hmm. But he likes Watson. If he likes Watson, that means he likes me, because I'm just a joke like Watson. I'm not a super mm -hmm. genius. I couldn't walk in and solve a crime from this dot and that hair. If Sherlock says something that makes us think he's not in connection with other human beings, we have Watson there to remind Sherlock to be connected. Um, and I think this is the genius of Doyle, and the, and the reason that Sherlock is so durable is that he has this great sidekick. I, I credit uh, Cervantes with the invention of the sidekick. I think Sancho Panza is probably the greatest sidekick of all time. Once again, a goofy guy who does things like eat and defecate and fart and belch and sweat, and the idealist guy who doesn't do any of those things. If he does them, it's always off camera. You go into the Lord of the Rings movie. Mm -hmm. We have one character the dwarf, Gimli, who drinks and eats and belches. Mm -hmm. Nobody else does it. We need somebody to do human things to let us know that these are human beings doing it. Uh, we, we don't need everybody to do it, but we need somebody to go to the bathroom just to make sure that there are bathrooms. John Lowry interviews were filmed at the Hotel Boulderado, located in the heart of historic downtown Boulder, Colorado, and a proud sponsor of the Boulder International Film Festival, voted one of the top film festivals in the U.S. The interviews are brought to you in part by Game Force Longmont, Colorado's premier video game store. From the 32X to the 360, if the game existed, Game Force Longmont has it.